Imagine you're in your bed at night and you get cold. You don't have an electric blanket and you can't adjust the heat. So somebody tells me you get cold, how do you get warm? What do you do? You add a blanket, right? Put another blanket on. The blanket doesn't make heat by itself, but it traps the heat from your body. And after a while, you start to get warm. Yep. And then you may get too warm. Yep. You start to sweat. You start to move around. You're uncomfortable. You're too hot. So what do you do? Take that blanket off. You take the blanket off. Yes. That's what's right. happening to our world. That's the essence of climate change. Right. We put so many fossil fuels and carbon in the air that the planet is surrounded by a blanket of gas gases and it's trapping the heat of the planet and it's making what you see on television the glaciers the ice caps of melt and just like you sweat that means that the rains are heavier the hurricanes are more intense and more powerful and just as you're wrinkling your sheets because you're uncomfortable those are the tornadoes and all the other things and so what the scientists have said is that this is going to get worse. That this is the new normal. That the 1,000 year flood they called it, called it in 2015, 2016 Matthew, Irma 2017, 2018 Florence. We just dodged a bullet with Hurricane Dorian in 2019. This is the new normal. This is the urgency of now. Yeah. And you want to know what? The Calvary is not coming. Nope. Because the Calvary is us. <laughs> and we have to figure out how we're going to make our communities more resilient. Yeah. So that they can withstand the storms and recover quicker. <coughs> how we can do mitigation. So that down in Britain's Neck, yeah. the Little PD River, yeah. which is designated as a scenic yeah. river, and has a conservation status that says you can't dig that river out. Yeah. And when I go down to Britain's Neck, as I have since I've been six weeks old, because my mother and father are from there, my wife is from there, and my grandmother, I remember telling me, and my grandfather, my grandmother, Bessie Woodbury, saying to me one time when I said, bye, Grandma, I'm going home. She said, that's not your home. Britain's Neck is your home. That's just the place your parents are working because they can make a better paycheck. But one day all of y'all will be back here and I'm back and they move back. So everywhere that I go, if Virginia Sanders and others have said, yes, I've been to the White House. Yeah. Yes, I've been to the State Department. Yes, I went to Poland last year for the United Nations Conference on Climate Change. And yes, I'm going to Santiago, Chile in December. But you want to know something? And we have witnesses here. My wife, Loretta Slade, is other. I don't care where I go. The word South Carolina, Marion County, Britain's name, never failed to come out of my mouth. So a couple of weeks ago when I spoke for the Congressional Black Caucus, I talked about what was happening here. And people are listening. And people like Virginia Sanders and others, they want to help. But you can't help people who won't help themselves. Isn't Amen. that right? Amen. So that means you got Amen. to go out and you got to talk to your neighbors. Right. You have to talk to the members of your church. church. You have to talk to your family members and you have to tell them that we are the Calvary and only we can save ourselves. Because if we can move that designation as a scenic river for the Little PD River and dredge it out so it's deeper, then it will hold more water. And instead of it flooding over into your yards and your homes, it can go into the Big PD That's River. Right. That's right. That's we can save ourselves because then we can talk about putting retaining ponds in down in Britain's Neck. And, and running pipes so that when the floods come, the floods can be less because, yeah, we made retaining ponds. Yeah. 
that maybe generally have six feet of water, eight feet of water, but they're deep enough to handle 12 or 14 feet of water. So when the floods come, it goes in there. You want to know something else? Yeah. Why don't we put fish in there? So the people can have food to eat and we can start to create businesses and engines of economic development so you don't have to drive all the way to Conway to work a job in Walmart where some weeks they let you work 32 hours, other weeks they only let you work 18 hours and you work in two or three jobs and still worrying about them repossessing your car. We are the Calvary. We are the change. And we can do this, but we have to remove the obstacles yes. that are in the way. Yes. Okay, $48 million came to South Carolina. Let me tell you how that 